muted. Today we have a good one for you guys. We're going to be going over Google Calendar integration. Um, I'm going to be doing the demo myself. Uh, so that's how you know it's going to be good. Um, so a couple things uh, that I want to talk about before we jumped in. Um, for Google Calendar integration, it can be as simple as you need it to be and as complex as you need it to be. Um, today, um, we're going to be demoing some of the more complex uh, things that you can be doing uh, with Google Calendar and your AppSheet app. Uh, however, uh, we won't have enough time by a long shot to be able to go completely in depth uh, over, over everything that encompasses in today's demo. Uh, so if you enjoy today's demo, if you want to learn more, uh, please, please let me know in the comments or send me an email. Um, and what we'll do is we'll make a uh, more in-depth path uh, for this topic. Um, there are a lot of actions, a lot of workflows uh, that all kind of need to be in alignment in order to make this work. Um, so like I said, we're not going to be doing an, uh, a completely from scratch build today. Um, I actually borrowed, so I created this app for one of my clients um, and I've changed all of his data and I've made this app completely my own. Um, but you can see we, I'll kind of go over the uh, users table or for the, the sheets table. So I've got a couple, couple, uh, couple tables here. You'll notice that Google Calendar is not one of them. That is because uh, it doesn't need to be. It's technically Google Calendar is a sheet in itself. Uh, it's just hidden from from us. But I can show you how all that all that works in a minute. Uh, so as always, I always recommend having a users table uh, with your email being the key. You shouldn't need an ID column here. Um, but uh, and then we have a couple couple different tables uh this app what this app does is uh <laughs> basically we made it to where this app um let's say you wanted to take a course um some type of class that uh like a college course or uh some type of lecture that's shared throughout your community um so we we have a couple subjects here science, math, history, chemistry, and English. We're going to pick science, and we're going to pick an instructor, which will be Testerson today. And we're going to make this date tomorrow at uh, 10 or 1 10 PM. And we're going to finish this up at uh, 5 o'clock PM. And we've got a course description here, location, and a number of spots that are allowed for this session. Um, and then I also have an option here. So if we wanted to create multiple sessions at the same time, then if we hit yes, whenever we hit save, it would reopen this form and repopulate these fields. But for this case, we're going to say no. Now I have a confirmation on this action. Uh, this confirmation is pretty important. Uh, just because it tells you whether or not the action is going to run. Uh, if you don't see this confirmation, it's not going to be added to Google Calendar. Um, and transactions already closed. So there you have it. Let's see. Uh, as I said before, this is a pretty uh, extensive process. Let's see if this added, it did not. So I'm going to manually delete this and we're going to start from scratch again. Science Testerson tomorrow at 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Test, test. All right, and we're going to save this. All right, 
So no error there. See, that's why it's important. Uh, those those errors are are the confirmations are pretty important for uh, being able to see where errors are in your workflows. So now you'll notice that this sheet was this uh, calendar was blank before. It is no longer blank. This is the event that I just created, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's got some uh, data here. This is actually pretty important. Um, we can change this, uh, but for the purpose of this demo, we're going to go ahead and leave it how it is. Um, you'll see that it's also here. So that's great. Oh, I totally forgot. I also created this workflow diagram. Uh, that way you can see um, what user inputs, how they interact with work. Uh, your workflows and how they interact with your actions. Uh, this isn't all of them. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, you there will be more um, that you're going to need, but these are the basics. Uh, and with, with these, you should be able to get uh, most of this data into your app. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about some of these actions and workflows. So um, I created this just so it would be easier to to map out. Uh, I know for myself personally, it is a struggle to uh, be able to follow all of these because um, it's a lot of things. Um, but let's say for um, for your class session. So this is this is what I just added this science ID, um, the time, the date, all of this got added to a calendar event, OK? And so I can take a look at this workflow, which is called add, let's see, where is it? Oh, this should be a action, I think, actually. Yes, this is supposed to be an action. My apologies. Um, so this is an action, um, and what it does is it takes into account um, certain data and puts it into the Google Calendar. Um, now I should also show you this table because, as I said before, this is it's a sheet, but it's stored in the Google Cloud database. So we don't actually have Technically, we don't have access to this. Uh, we just have access to the user interface, which is the calendar itself. Um, but these are the columns uh, that the calendar uses. Um, and so you can't uh, add new static columns. Uh, you can't, uh, you can change these. Um, but uh, you'll notice it has a thumbnail. This is actually automatically generated by AppSheet, which is pretty neat. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, if you go in and test this function or expression, you'll see, I don't know if you can read it, but it's just a square with the date uh, in it. So that's something that AppSheet automatically generates. Um, now, there's there's two things that are necessary for connecting your workflows uh, to the the calendar. Um, the first one is going to be this row ID. Um, now you'll notice this is um, I have in the expression uh, unique ID and unique ID. This is because um, this needs to be very specifically completely unique. Um, it, realistically, I could put another unique ID here uh, just because of how uh, special this is. Because normally in your AppSheet apps, it compares the ID in the ID column. It compares the IDs of things in that spreadsheet. Uh, but like I told you before, this isn't a spreadsheet. This is directed to the Google Calendar database. And there are a lot 
of IDs in the Google Calendar database. Uh, so realistically, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So this will create a 24 uh, alphanumeric unique ID that is specific for uh, the session that we create or the calendar event. Um, the other thing you'll see here is the extracted session ID. This is something that I did. Um, you can actually do this a couple of different ways, uh, but this was the most, uh, it was the easiest to do at the time. Um, so this is an index uh, and it takes a split of the description by spaces in position two. So this description is actually put together here. So if you remember, it was an index split description by spaces of position two. So here's our first space right here. And then I actually put another space here. Um, and so what it does is it actually pulls this value, the session ID, out of the description and puts it into a virtual column. Um, now, why is that important, you might ask? <laughs> Let's see. Let me show you this. So this is an expression that was designed for uh, adding attendees to the cal Google Calendar invite. Um, so you'll see it's a select expression. It pulls the username or the user email uh, out of the signups table. And it has a, an and expression here where the session ID is equal to this row dot session uh, extracted session ID. So that's where that comes into play. Um, and uh, the column called attending, which this probably could have a better name, but uh, does not equal canceled. Um, so anything else? Can I zoom in on those expressions? I think so. Here, let's just do this. Hopefully everyone can see it now. Um, so uh, this is the expression. If you uh, are wondering why there's different colors, uh, AppSheet Toolbox is the greatest. Uh, but that's, that's where the uh, extracted session ID comes out of. Um, and this is also really important. So the Google Calendar ref, um, this is the, the row ID. So there's no way for us to see the row ID uh, without either going into the test or by doing this expression here. Uh, and so this actually pulls, uh, wait, I'm sorry. This is what it runs on. The, this sorry, this is the expression to select which rows the action runs on. The action that I was referencing is called row ID to Google Calendar invite, which is this one. This is what we're talking about. So it takes the the row ID of the training calendar, and this is the condition where session ID equals extracted session ID. And so it puts that into a column that I put in this table here. So you'll see unique ID here. Um, and so this references this calendar event. Uh, Ken Frazier would be great for a staff leave request app. Also deletes from the calendar if a request gets canceled. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Ken, I was actually planning on building that uh, functionality for this demo and realized that I wouldn't even have enough time for uh, what we currently have. Um, but I agree, uh, very, very useful tool um, for, for Google, Google Calendar integration. Uh, thank you for your comment. All right. Um, so cool. So now that we kind of have an idea of how 
uh, at least the basics of how this thing works. Uh, let's go ahead and show you it in action. So I'm going to pull this out and open this here. All right. So got my Google Calendar here, and I've got my AppSheet app here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and sign up for this. So I have an action here that signs up for this session. Um, this is important because this, as you can tell from here, sign up by user, not only does it send an email confirmation to the user, uh, but it also runs the uh, update attendees with signups workflow. Uh, so this is this flow right here is actually how you get added to an event. So I'm going to sign up for this and sync this and in a second here once this gets added so right there boom so now you'll see uh epic greece oh i forget that i let's do it on um we'll do it on mine So I'm going to sign up for that exact same session and make, force those syncs through. And so you'll see I'm going to pop up right here uh, in purple. There it is. So you'll see that I got added to the event as well as the organizer. And then this is actually the instructor uh that we have listed for that course i have another workflow that adds the instruct or action that adds the instructor to uh, the event as well so all of these are on the calendar um, for those of you who are familiar with google calendar uh, it does give you the 10 minute notification before you uh, the event starts so it's pretty nice pretty handy um, but that's how that works um, let's say, let's say we went in here, we created a different session. Let's, uh, let's do math here for instructor. We'll make me the instructor and we'll do this one for, uh, today at four o'clock PM and we'll make it go till 11 20 PM. We'll have our course description. This is a test, location, test, and then we'll have a random number of spots. And again, we'll hit no on this. So now we'll add this to the Google Calendar. And there it is. So you'll see that session ID, you'll see the course description. The location is actually lo located underneath the time. Um, and now I can edit this session. I have I have a workflow in here. Um, let me pull this back up. So to update the calendar event, we have a workflow followed by two actions. Um, so this workflow just is a trigger for this. It says, hey, run this action. And then this action runs an action on a different table, which is what this one is. Um, so let's go ahead and change. Sorry, my headset died. It's all kinds of technical issues today. Uh, so we got 4 p.m. to 11.20 p.m. Let's change this to 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we'll leave the, or we can change this location. We'll change it to Walmart. That's where this lecture is going to be today. Um, and so now when we save it, it's going to move that event uh, up. There it is. So you'll see the location change, the time changed, and it's here. Uh, and we are able to sign up for these here after we push this through. And I show my stuff. Interesting. 
Well, it's not wanting to show up. Um, but, uh, and I would go into troubleshooting it, but honestly, it would probably take me about 45 minutes to troubleshoot. So for now, <laughs> we're just going to leave it as it is. Um, cool. So that's the basics of how this app works. Um, I have a couple different views this. So we have available courses. This is a, uh, app launcher actually that. Uh, it only displays, you'll notice that before this was blank, then it only had science and math. So whenever I add a session, let's add a session for history and we'll make me, uh, and this doesn't matter. Test, test. All right. So now you'll see that history is now added here and it is added to the list of available courses. Um, before there wasn't here. Uh, so basically, if this uh, table view is blank, then the course icons don't show. Um, so that's all that is. Then we have my classes. So this is actually the classes that I'm personally signed up for. And so you can see those, you can see the date, uh, and you can, you can add more columns to the side to see what time and uh, location, et cetera. Uh, but I didn't feel that was necessary. And then if you were, say, a teacher for these classes, uh, which I made myself a teacher for two of them, uh, you'd be listed here. Um, so that's kind of how all that works. Um, if you wanted to see, I can show you this. Sorry. So these are, uh, the, um, these are the extracted IDs. Uh, this is the row ID, the extracted ID, and you'll see it, see it, it is a table in, in itself. Uh, but because it's Google calendar, you're not going to be able to see, uh, see it in a tabular format necessarily. Um, cool. So uh, that's basically it. Uh, if I were to go into more depth, um, we would be here for hours. Um, so if you guys have any questions, now's the time to ask them. Uh, I know I went kind of quickly. Uh, so my apologies for that. Um, But yes, any questions would be appreciated, and I'd love to answer those. I think there's a, a little bit of a delay. Um, I can show you some of these actions while I'm waiting for some comments. Um, the plan, the plan originally was to go over everything. Uh, and I demoed this to Stefan and he basically said, Clark, that's way too complicated. Uh, that's a three or four hour webinar, uh, which I actually do not have time for. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're either going to try to break this up into uh, smaller uh, bits or we're going to create a path and have that on appsheettraining.com. Um, so uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm still not seeing any questions. So hopefully you guys are um, at least comprehending the functionality of the app. Um, 
So uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and cut it short today. Oh, is the demo app available on public for us to digest? Currently it isn't. Um, I clearly still have a couple bugs uh, that I would need to work out. Um, are you able to send? Um, but uh, depending on how we move forward with, with this, uh, we will make this demo app available to the public uh, so you guys can uh, digest it, as, as you put it. Uh, uh, Jody, uh, it should work with Out Outlook as well. Um, I personally did not use Outlook at all when I was um, – I don't – See Outlook here, so it may not. Um, let's see. Uh, you can use the Microsoft Outlook uh, API. Let's see. Okay, so I mean, you can you can use your Microsoft login here. So I would assume that this would take you to the Microsoft Outlook. Um, but as I said, I personally haven't tried that. Oh, Cameron says it is not yet supported. My apologies. Um, Brian, are you able to send invites to attendees when the calendar event gets added? Um, are you saying as an instructor, uh, manually sending out invites to attendees? Um, for, for this app in particular, um, I could, uh, uh, manually add people, uh, to these. Um, so if I were to go in here, let's change this to Stefan at When someone signs up, instead of sending them an email, just send them the calendar invite as they get added to the event. Um, I don't think so. Uh, at least definitely not based on how this app is structured. Um, I'm trying to think of how that would work. I feel like you would have to... Let's see. Okay, so there is a web link URL. So uh, yes, I guess you could um, manually extract that into an email template. Um, and then it would be in a URL that they could click on and then add themselves to it. Um, I haven't played with that at all so uh don't quote me on that if it doesn't work but that should be how that is uh working let's uh let's just copy paste this in here all right so it does in fact work um uh for those of you who don't know this was an event that we had uh, in the calendar in January for this account for some reason. Um, so yes, this would just be a workflow. So email for successful sign up. Uh, you would end up putting that in here. So um, this would be the link. You'd have your and then this would be the uh, web link. 
So that's that's kind of how that would go. And then this would auto populate from your training calendar. Um, actually, you would you'd probably have to do a select expression here. Uh, since this is actually running off the signups table instead of the training calendar. Um, that way you can still have it as a button. Um, so you would run any select um, and it would be, here, I'll just write it out. So this would be any select and this would be training calendar web link um, where this row dot session ID is equal to our extracted session ID. Um, and so this this would pull uh, a single value from this list, which is only a single value. There should only be one uh, Google Calendar meet for each session. Um, and so this would pull the web link out of that table. I'll put it in here. Um, And yeah, so that will that will pull the um, the web link out of there. Hope that answers your question, Brian. Looks like it didn't like that. Ah, uh, parentheses. What are you gonna do? Um, the most useful tool that I have found for these is to actually input them into a expression here. So I've got two parentheses. I'll just put a third one on the or second one on the end. And there we go. So that was the only problem. I'll add that parentheses here and save this. And I forgot to delete that. But now you can see app is running how it should, no errors. Um, and we can actually do a test if you'd like. So let's create a session. We'll go in with Testerson and we'll go 12. And we'll go 12.36. So it's just an hour long tomorrow. Test, test, five, and save. All right, so this is going to add our calendar event here. I'm going to delete these just. Um, and so you can still send cancellation emails to the guests. Uh, deleting that one will delete this one. Interesting. All right, so it didn't pull. That's why the other one didn't work either. It didn't actually pull the Google Calendar. So maybe that was too many unique IDs. Let's check that. I just have to. Interesting.
Well, we'll just manually pull it for now. Um, oh, what is this? Just because we don't have a ton of time to be able to uh, pull all of this out. Oh, I didn't pull anything. Interesting. Hmm. Well, uh, like I said, there's uh, definitely some still some tinkering that needs to be done in order to get this completely functional. Uh, but I hope that answered all of your questions for today. Um, like I said, please feel free to reach out in the comments of either this video or send me an email. Uh, my email is this right here, Clark at Grease Solutions. Uh, or you can also email me at clark at crewtech.com. Both of these work. Uh, they're both directed to the same inbox. Um, so uh, feel free to email me. Let me know if this is something that you guys are actually interested in uh, because we'd love to publish some content for you guys. Uh, but that should be all the time. Uh, so thank you guys. Thank you guys all for coming in. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't checked out AppSheet, toolbox please do so um i used it several times even in this session it is a game changer uh so helpful um so yeah all right y'all have a wonderful rest of your day